Alright guys, today I got a 2008 Ford Escape Hybrid and the customer brought it in because they were just driving along and then a wrench light showed up in the cluster there. I pulled codes on it and of course it's the common B1239 code which is for the mode door actuator in the rear on these. On these, they have a whole HVAC case back there to cool off the battery and that little mode door actuator well, they monitor very closely because what it does is either lets outside fresh air go through the battery and cool it off, or it, it takes the door inside of there and it recirks the air through an EVAP and it actually cools and dehumidifies the battery which is very important and as many of you know charging rates on batteries are affected by temperature and of course you don't want batteries to boil over especially in high humidity high temperature areas like Florida or anywhere during the summer so it's very important for this actuator to work back there and the system monitors it very very closely so you may get this popped up on your on your cluster there as a wrench light and if it gets bad enough the inferred uh, battery temperature back there is, is high enough it may shut down the vehicle now these actuators fail all the time even the new ones we've put on in the past we've had customers come back two three years later and the actuator has failed again and they've gone through multiple revisions on there actually the TSB says for an E suffix is the latest one and the latest one actually right now is the F suffix so um, it's gone through multiple revisions, and hopefully with this F, this one's been out for a while, this is like a final repair on there, F for final, right? And it'll it'll fix it permanently on there, because it's not really doing too much back there, but it is failing internally, and once it does, it'll, it'll set that light like that. All right, so this actuator is not too bad to get to. It's kind of buried over here in the left-hand rear uh, quarter panel trim panel interior trim panel on here so we're going to pull that off of there and the upper D pillar trim panel so in order to do that we're going to get a few things out of the way like the seats and that cover and the trim panels down below so I'll walk you through everything from a distance here and then once we get in there um, I'll bring the camera in closer for some detailed videos up close of what I'm doing now there are a lot of steps to this procedure but as long as you follow along I'll walk you right through it you should have zero problems um, you don't have to disconnect the negative battery cable or the high voltage battery at all. There's no danger, nothing like that. We just need to start getting trim panels out of the way and uh, we can get right to it. It's pretty much out in the open after you get these trim panels out of the way. So the first thing we're going to do is get this right here off and it just simply pulls up. We're gonna get this cover out of the way if yours has one. We're gonna fold the left hand side seats down. And then we're gonna pull the carpet out of the way. You can pull all the way out or just off to the side like this, either way. And then we're going to start pulling the uh, trim panel, the interior trim panel right there off. Again, no screws. All you got to do is start popping the clips on there to be careful. You may want to use a pry tool behind there or pop the actual clip and not yank on the uh, um, trim panel so much. They're pretty stout clips on there. Now over here to get the rest of this uh, quarter panel trim panel off, the one retainer it has is right here and that's part of the door sill plate here. And you just simply have to get in there with a pry tool of sorts, cat claw, and pull this up and out of there. It's pretty brittle, it might break it. I was able to get mine out without breaking it. 
and then you can simply lift up on this and then this uh, trim panel will be free. A few more clips down here and then you can see it just lifts up and out of the way. Put our seat back down. Let it lay like that. And then you can see once you get it past this hook right here, the whole thing's free. And then you can just take this whole thing up and out of here. And that was actually probably the hardest part of the job was getting these trim panels out of the way. Now all you got is the actuator and some duct work. All right, next thing we're gonna do is get this airflow ductwork right here out of the way. That goes from the HVAC case over to the traction battery. So all it has is a couple eight millimeter screws in it and one scrivet. So use a Phillips head and you start backing this scrivet out of there, like so. And then you can take the screw out And it looks something like that. Besides that, there's what four eight millimeter screws to take out. And then this whole thing will lift right up and out of here. It's literally a pass through. That's all it is. All right, next thing we're gonna do is pull the fresh air inlet duct work out. There's two uh, 10 millimeter nuts right here and over here. Goes out. And then this should come out and slide up and out. Okay, so apparently there's a section of video that's missing detailing to unbolt the box from the body. And the way you do that is a 10 mil bolt right here, and there's a 10 mil bolt right here, and then a little push pin, and then you can proceed with the rest of the video and taking it apart from the body. And then down below here, right underneath the HVAC housing, you see those two nuts right there. We're talking the two 10 millimeter nuts, this one and that one. Do not touch these ones. These ones have refrigerant lines that are connected to them that are pressurized. You don't want to touch those, just these ones. Get those out of there. And then the box should be nice and free since we're not bolted to the body no more. And then all you gotta do is manhandle the case out of here, up and then out a little bit so we can get to this actuator and its bolts. I like to put the bracket up here, this big bracket, sneak it past the case and get it over here and then you can get underneath here, get a pry bar, get underneath it a little bit, help the studs through the body, it's real light pressure. Now once it's loose enough, I just disconnect these connectors get them out of the way and then you can see with it up and out of there we can get access to all three of these bolts on here which are 5.5 millimeter and the whole reason we had to do this was this back one right here it's too close to the body whereas the rest of them are accessible so let's take those out of there maneuver the case as needed to get to this back one. It'll still be a little tight, but you don't want to pull the whole friggin' case out of here. And then this actuator simply slides out of here. Like so. You see it's loose now. So we're gonna go down here. There's a little tang right here for the electrical connector. Disconnect that, get that out of the way. And 
And then the back side of it here, there's gonna be a little arm. It's attached to this actuator. Just slide it off of it, that stays on. There we go. And you got the old actuator out of there. Put our new one in. And we're gonna slide it into this arm on here real quick. You can see it right there, just line up the slots in the actuator with the arm and put that through first and then we'll stick it into the case. There it goes, slid right in. All right, I got you in nice and close here now so you can see how that arm sticks into the actuator and then we can stick the actuator into the case and like I said just, just be very gentle with it. it just slide right in there it goes you can see it just fell into place now once the actuator falls into place it just slides right in first thing you got to do is line up this cross down here and then the rest of the bolts will line up so you can see it's already in there so you push it in and then I'll line up everything else on here and then of course once your cross down here is lined up all the rest of your bolt holes will line up. Everything should slide right into each other uh, very freely like that. All you gotta do after that is put your three screws back in. Of course. Bolt her back up. Now of course don't forget your connector for it. Clip that into it. Push it until it clicks. And then we'll get these connectors back together. Before you forget. Next thing we gotta do is get this case back flush to the floor, which means we need to get those two studs that we pulled up and out of here earlier uh, for the nuts underneath back through the floor because right now the case is so high they actually popped out of the two holes in there. Just gotta move it around a little bit. And you'll feel them start falling back into place. The back one fell in already. And we need to find the hole for this one. There we go. It all fell back into place. Get your bracket over in front of the screw hole here so we can bolt it all together come over here and align the push pin up so it can go into the body same place as earlier and we can start putting these 10 millimeter screws back in we get this one lined up And then before I bolt these in, tighten them down, these two screws, I go down below and I do those two 10 millimeter nuts we took out earlier from the EVAP case. I cinch those down first, and then I come up here and finish these. We'll get our ductwork back in there. Just slide right in. Get down in there a little bit. nuts one up top one the side same as earlier all right so the last piece of the puzzle here is this duct work that crosses over between the HVAC case and the battery itself before we put that on, I want to explain a little bit about why this actuator is even needed and why it's so closely monitored. Basically what the batteries need more than anything is a cooling effect to them. So they either use outside air if it's cool enough or they'll use the EVAP inside of the case here. So what this actuator does is it moves a door inside of here to either the fresh air mode and it'll come in, cool it and go back out. or it'll move the door inside of there and it'll allow the air through recirc mode to go through the EVAP and that'll cool the battery down. So it just depends on the battery temperature and the ambient temperature if this door is going to be moved in either position and it's essential for battery cooling. That's why it's so closely monitored. Besides that, this goes in, falls into place. And it should literally fall into place and uh, not need anything. 
any kind of adjustment, screw it, push it into place. And these ones, you're gonna wanna start them by hand. They're all the same bolt, all the same kind. And then we'll just tighten them down. And the next thing we'll do is start putting this D-pillar trim panel on. There are some alignment tabs on there. You'll see them. And that literally presses into the body. And the same thing with this big old trim panel. It just slides right into here. You can start lining it up in different places. Get it around the seat belt here. And then start dropping it down this channel. There we go. I'm gonna get hooked under the door sill plate over here. We took out earlier the push pin. Get underneath there. And then you just go from one end to the next. And it literally snaps in. Carpeting back. Tuck it in. There we go. Put your cover back in if you have one. And then the last thing you gotta do is pop this back in, just line it up. Kind of feel it. And then fix your weather strip. Just kind of pull it out and lay it over it. Same thing down here. You'll see it. It'll be rolled over. All right, so hopefully this helps. I like to get these videos out as they come in. We don't see the hybrids too much anymore, but there are a few common faults on these that and the hybrid systems that are fixable by the customer if you're mechanically inclined. Or if you want to bring it to the dealer, at least you'll know what we're talking about and what we're fixing on here so you're definitely well-informed.